So welcome to the 2017 Jaguar F-Type Coupe. So you remember last year's video of the convertible, and at the time I was annoyed I was given the convertible because I took a further look at the coupe. But as that video turned out, it was okay because it was a nice sunny day in Wales and we had lots of fun with the roof down. But I still wanted to test the coupe, so here it is. Now in 2017, um, some changes were made to the F-Type lineup. Two litre engine introduced a 400 special edition. But this is the R Dynamic, and uh, this will replace the S variant. So it's probably worth having a look at this car. Now what I'm going to do next is uh, show you the exterior, I'll do the interior, we'll do some dynamic driving shots as well. But first things first, let's take a look at what the dynamic model brings. So the first change to take notes of are the lights. These are slightly smoked, um, which I think look, look really great, particularly at night time when they're illuminated. They look fantastic. Dynamic badge, of course. Then the wheels are the next thing. So these hulking great 20 inch rims are specific to the dynamic car and look pretty good. Love the sort of diamond cut finish in particular. And then these uh, side blades down here, these are also specific to the car and make it look more aggressive, which is what the dynamic is really all about. Then coming to the front of the car, the next biggest change is LED technology in the lights. These are standard now on the uh, dynamic model. Uh, and LED gives you brighter lights at night, uh, reaches further into the darkness, so they put it on all their bump and just gives you that brighter, more, I guess, safer driving experience. And so now, now to the interior of the car. You'll particularly like the door handles and the mirrors folding out. If you're a techno geek like me, you'll like that quite a bit. Let's take a look at the inside of the car. And so to the inside, it looks quite familiar in terms of Jaguar look. What they have added now in 2017 is sort of chrome finishes, the steering wheel, which I think look really good. Well done, Jaguar. Dials still nice and clear to read. Analog, no TFT in here particularly for the speedo and rev counter and so on. We've got uh, all the usual menu controls here, bit of cruise control, heated steering wheel, paid for option of course. Um, then the infotainment system in this car which I'll show you in a second, is a quantum leap on from the first version that Jaguar put in this car, which is dreadful. This is much, much better, and I'll show you some more of that later on. Familiar layout, eight-speed ZF gearbox, lightning quick changes. It's not double clutch, but it's very, very good. And the all-important loudness button. So the exhaust is still very, very loud in this car. Very nice too. The other change you'll see in this car is the seats. So these are much cooler looking. These are sports seats, which are standard in the dynamic model, much lighter, eight kilos lighter than the usual seats that you'll see in the, in the F-Type and all the usual controls. Brilliantly, memory seats for the passenger as well, which I think is a bit unusual, but a blooming good idea. Now, the thing that I will have a little bit of a moan about are the Peugeot mirror controls, which I always moan about in Jaguars. I hate them. Really cheap and plasticky. Also not sure about this door handle, which is very angular. But you know, to be honest, that's it. The rest of the interior is lovely. And gone are some of the cheaper plastics, with the exception of this cover here, which is better. I know I'm nitpicking, um, but not too bad. Then the cubby hole here, connectors for um, USB, HDMI, and a SIM card. So you can run your phone through the car if you want to, and also a 12 volt connector, which I've got my phone plugged into. That's it, it looks very similar to the last one, just better quality, and the little shiny bits, <laughs> to get all technical, look pretty darn good too. But enough of all the other usual boring stuff. Let's take a look at some of the more exciting bits about the car, and in particular, the noises it makes. The time of the van going past. So here we go. Let's get the electrics on. I can show you this wonderful new display, the rising vents thing everybody likes in the F-Type. What we all really, really like is that noise, that startup noise. You would never, ever get bored of that. Bings and bongs telling me the right door's open, but who cares? Let's get this thing out on the road and take it for a drive.
Halfway through the test drive, what do I make of it so far? Well, it looks great. We saw the exterior shots. The interior is nice, it's improved for 2017 model here, which is nice. Sounds good, still as fast as ever, and feels good. So remember the theme of this uh, channel is about how cars make you feel. This feels pretty good, pretty special. Um, now, buying, buying one of these things, interesting. So. I went through the process of specking one through Jaguar's brilliant configurator. It's by far the best one I've used, I have to say, well done Jaguar. Um, lots of things appear to be options. So some of the silly things. So reverse parking sensors are optional. You get those on a Fiesta, I mean that's, that seems a bit weird. Um, heated windscreen uh, was standard on my mum's Ford Fusion in 2003. It's a bit strange. Um, and that's a 265 pounds option. And some of the options are really cheap as well, so it makes you wonder why they don't include them as standard. Um, various little options, like cigarette lighter being a real one is 50 pounds. Don't really understand some of those things. Um, but they're minor niggles really. I mean, the standard car's good with its sat nav and so on. The in-touch is much easier to use now. You can pinch and swipe screens, which looks quite cool. Um, doesn't look quite as good as the one in the Audi A7 that I now own. Um, later video to come but overall this car's a belter I like it a lot so I'm gonna drive some more today we'll get some more shots and then I'll do a summary including my comparison to the Porsche and 911 GTS that I drove recently but couldn't get it on film I'll explain later um, but I can now compare f-types to 911s and Caymans and Boxsters I'll explain later back to the driving Conclusions of the Jaguar F-Type are dynamic, a bit of a mouthful. Well, it's an F-Type, and I like them, as you know. Uh, noisy, fast, looks brilliant, looks sensational, I think, personally. Not sure I'll buy a black one, I've been out in this for a day and a half or so, and it's filthy and looks horrible. Um, but that's kind of uh, minor detail, really. A couple of issues on the trim quality, but things are a lot better in the 2017 than when the car first came out. The coupe looks better than a convertible. Um, in fact, I think it looks fantastic. No other word for it. Um, things have moved on in the interior, so I showed you the uh, better layout now. Some of the parts have been sort of uh, coated in silver, chrome look stuff, which that looks pretty good. Um, now. 911. I mentioned earlier on in one part of the video that I'd driven a 911. I have. 911 GTS. Um, thanks to a good friend of mine, I got a half day on a track, Silverstone to be precise, at the Porsche Centre there, and drove a 911 for the first time. And it's very good. I like it a lot. Um, really impressed with the technology on hand. The build quality is exceptional. Uh, goes like a rocket. Um, and a lot of fun, I'm going to say, absolutely brilliant. So I can finally say I've driven a 911 and what's it like versus one of these? Well, it's different, different kind of car. Um, one of the main differences is out on the road, people will look at this more than they'd look at a 911 um, unless you're a real car buff. If you're a real car buff, you'll spot a 911 and you'll know which model it is and which series it is and all those other nerdy things. Whereas the F-Type draws attention just because of the way it looks and sounds. Everybody looks at this thing. People wind their windows down so they can hear it because they know it's going to sound good. Um, so I think it's perhaps more of a car for the, the masses. Perhaps the Porsche is more of a purist car. Maybe. I don't know. Um, so of the two, which would I choose? I'd choose this, I think. Um, I've still got a fundamental problem with the 911, the fact the engine's beyond the rear wheels doesn't make any sense um, 
but notwithstanding it drives brilliantly the 911 it's a fantastic car but for me this is a bit more raw um, a bit more exciting and if you're in the market for a used semi supercar then an f-type's cheaper you'll get a really good well specced f-type s like the convertible i drove last year starting about 35k similar year porsche add another 10 grand on that at least so as a second hand buy make more sense to have one of these potentially unless you're a hard and fast porsche fan um, options so both cars options cost a bomb so i was playing with a configurator like i mentioned earlier for this car starts at 64 and a bit um, and without pressing too many buttons you're suddenly adding another ten thousand pounds on which is a bit frightening but the 911 is exactly the same um, as is the uh, cayman and boxster that i've also driven recently on the silverstone track couldn't film them though wasn't allowed to tried um, so different propositions entirely. Uh, I love this car though, it's brilliant, it's quick, it's fast. It uh, does the 60 in 4.8 uh, for those that are interested in the numbers. So really, it does all the things you want it to do. It's comfortable as well. It's more comfortable than a 911, I think. These seats, these new seats are fabulous. So for a long distance cruise, maybe this. So how do I summarize all of that summary, if that makes any sense, superb. Brilliant. Well done Jaguar. A few niggles on quality in terms of parts, but actually, yeah, I mean, if you can uh, fit a two-seater into your life for fun, or as your main car, if you don't need any more than two seats, then this might just do the trick, because it is an absolute belter. And why not try one out for yourself? 15 minutes round the block at a dealership is no good to anybody. Uh, and I rented this from Avis Prestige for £135 for 24 hours, which is peanuts. I've done this for my birthday treat, uh, rather than endless shirts and socks and, dare I say, pants. Um, I'd rather spend the money on uh, this for 24 hours. So give it a try. Why not? Treat yourself. If you're a hard and fast Porsche fan, I challenge you to try an F-Type instead might change your mind I don't know give it a blast to see what you think so that's it I have nothing else to say in this waffling summary and conclusion other than give it a go I loved every second of it and uh, that's kind of it really join me in my next video I've got a new car in my stable at home which I'm looking forward to sharing with you in the meantime if you haven't subscribed press that button down there there's a link to my Facebook uh, page as well which I now have. So have a look at that too. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope to see you all again very soon.